The new anime Cyberpunk Edgerunners just recently came out, so of course I had to watch it and review it. I have not played the game Cyberpunk 2077, so I have basically zero knowledge of anything that happens in it. Long story short, the anime is very good. Cyberpunk Edgerunners starts off following a kid named David who is still attending school at this point. His family, which only includes his mom at the beginning, is not well off financially. They are basically poor despite the fact that David attends a prestigious school. The school is run by Arasaka, which is a mega corporation. Since his family is poor, he isn't treated well by other students and cannot afford the updates necessary to further his education. He and his mother get into a car accident which eventually kills her. His mother leaves behind a military grade tech spine, a sand deviston which grants the user ridiculous speed. David gets the spine fused into him having nothing left to lose. He has a little bit of revenge on a bully in school and gets caught on camera by Arasaka who ends up having plans for him later on. David then stumbles into a group of edge runners. Edge runners is just a fancy term for mercenaries who always take dangerous jobs for good pay and they always live on the edge. They are the same edge runners who his mom helped out to get extra cash to pay for David's school. He joins Maine's crew and slowly learns the ropes, proving himself to be worthy of the crew and worthy of keeping the sand deviston. He is definitely special since somebody at his size should only use it sparingly, but he uses it repeatedly and can take all of the negative repercussions with it. As with every story of mercenaries, it starts off strong. They complete missions together, get closer with one another, specifically Lucy and David, and do very well. Nothing good lasts forever though. The crew starts off with around seven regulars, but slowly they start getting picked off and killed one by one. The first one to go is Pilar, then Dorio, Main, Kiwi, Rebecca, and then finally David, with Lucy being the sole survivor, and the later addition of Falco to the squad also barely surviving. Pilar dies while hanging out with Maine's gang from a person who has cyberpsychosis. This is a recurring theme throughout the anime. Cyberpsychosis is a personality disorder where the person essentially goes insane. It seems to be caused by having too much or faulty cyberware. Pilar noted that even this dude's dong was chromed out before he was killed. Maine succumbed to the illness cyberpsychosis during one of their jobs, making it much harder. And much later in the show, David does too. Later on, Arasaka along with a fixer named Faraday and Kiwi hatch a plan to have David test a cyber skeleton, since David does have an extremely high tolerance to his sand deviston. Arasaka believes the cyber skeleton can help them monopolize the cyberware market and dominate Night City. So Faraday, the gang's usual employer, and Kiwi double cross the crew. They back him into a corner during a job and essentially force him to install it in order to save his friends. Putting the cyber skeleton on only expedites the cyber psychosis for David. During the mission where Maine dies, Lucy deletes David's file from Arasaka. Afterwards, she spends her time trying to eliminate any Netrunners trying to find David's identity. She did all this alone and was trying to protect him. She ends up getting caught by Kiwi and Faraday, who double-crossed her as well. Faraday then takes Lucy to Arasaka as a bargaining chip. Obviously, at the end, David sacrifices himself in order to save Lucy. She escapes from the Edge Runner life and is able to finally visit the moon, which was her dream. The story of Cyberpunk Edge Runners is the telling of a legend, David Martinez. Just as they said in the show don't make a name for yourself as a cyberpunk by how you live make a name by how you die and boy did david die as a legend and a hero he never chased his own dreams always helping others trying to make them happy he went to school trying his best getting good grades for his mom when his mom died he had nobody and also had nothing to lose anymore he took the risk and became an edge runner upon joining that group of edge runners who are mostly dead now he grew closer specifically to lucy and maine when maine dies david takes the leadership role upon himself he then runs the crew exactly the way maine did making sure jobs were done quickly smoothly and with minimal casualties everyone got Got a fair cut of the money just as Maine would do too. He wanted to make Maine proud even though he was long gone. When Maine dies he adds one of Maine's arms to his arsenal of weapons and bulks up, becoming seemingly just as chromed out as Maine was. The difference in just how many modifications he gets and how huge he got after Maine's death is staggering. He wanted to treat Lucy right and go to the moon with her, all while keeping her safe. This was evident when David put his life on the line to save her from the cyber psycho who killed Pilar. Even at the end where he is slipping in and out of cyber psychosis and fighting for his life, he still has the presence of mind to make sure Lucy is safe and obviously has a great send off message for her. Never looking after his own dreams, but others instead. Now I'd like to look at it this way, that David's dream was actually to make others happy. That's why he did what he did constantly throughout the anime. Whoever he considered family, he tried to make them happy. Whether it was his mom, Lucy, Maine, 
or the rest of the crew. David felt like that was his purpose in life. Throughout the show, they did a great job with foreshadowing. David promised to make it to the top of Arasaka Tower, and in the final episode, he does, albeit in a different way compared to what his mom wanted. Main promises to give David his cybernetic arms, and when he dies, David barely escapes with one of them. They even foreshadowed the cyber psychosis for both Main and David, shown initially at the very beginning of the show, then later when Pilar is killed by someone who has it. Nobody who is that decked out with cybernetics will be able to last long. David is considered special to do it for as long as he did it, and even he was struggling immensely by the end. They even foreshadowed that at least somebody was going to make it to the moon all the way from episode 2. That somebody was obviously Lucy, and despite it just being a pretty boring and lame tourist attraction, she was just happy that she was able to go. The man that she loved, David, let her have that opportunity. Being on the moon allows her to be as far away as possible from Arasaka, who she grew up being raised and mistreated by. The most obvious foreshadowing was the betrayal of Kiwi and Faraday. In any type of mercenary work, at some point there will be somebody who tries to double cross someone else. It's just the nature of the job. Sometimes the pay's too great, or I think in Kiwi's case she realized that the crew was going to fall apart pretty soon. David was holding the crew together, but he was struggling and slowly getting closer to falling under cyber psychosis, needing Rebecca to help him by the end just as Dorio helped Maine. Kiwi takes the opportunity and then also predictably gets backstabbed by Faraday. You have to give some respect to Kiwi though, because even while she was dying she helped David find Lucy at the end. I feel like the anime did a fantastic job progressing the story, specifically the parts with cyber psychosis. I started watching this anime because of the blood and gore and the art style which is very enjoyable and end up continuing to watch for the enjoyable journey and story. At the end of Cyberpunk Edgerunners, I ended up giving it an 8.4 out of 10. After writing this review, going more in depth with it, I feel like I lowballed that rating. So I'm going to bump it up a bit to an 8.75 out of 10. I feel like if this anime was slightly longer, it definitely would have had the potential to be a 10 out of 10. I also feel like the ending could have been a bit better, with a small change of David actually going completely insane because of the cyber psychosis, but still obviously losing to Adam Smasher. But still, the ending was very solid and definitely a tearjerker, especially because of the fantastic final song. My favorite character in the show was Lucy. Ultimately, she was a badass and wanted the best for David, who unfortunately didn't listen to her when she wanted him to scale back to cybernetics. She's also top-tier waifu material. Really quick, I want to give an anime recommendation if you really enjoyed Cyberpunk Edgerunners and want something pretty similar to it. The anime recommendation is is Akudama Drive. Without going too much into it, I give Akudama Drive a pretty similar score, an 8.25 out of 10. The general vibe of the show is exactly the same, as well as the violence in it. It is only 12 episodes long. It's a very easy show to grind within a day, just like Cyberpunk Edgerunners is. What do you guys think of the video? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell me your favorite character in Cyberpunk Edgerunners. Tell me your favorite scene in the show. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.